Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 285 of our Bible study review. Today, we're going through the chapters 8 through 11 of 2 Chronicles. And yes, much like you have seen through the majority of the Chronicles, because we have gone through 1 and 2 Kings, this is, for the most part, a review. So I'm going to be using recycled material once again, but I promise you, it's so good. Today's message is loaded with gems, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just a moment. Please enjoy. So right here, when we open up in chapter 8, it says that Solomon, it took him 20 years to build the temple. And after he was finished doing that work, he was rebuilding other parts of the city, right? Reclaiming other parts of the city, rebuilding other parts. And so I just want to point something out because there is this puffed up pride about the ethnicity and the identity of who, you know, the true Judeans are and all of this mess. Um, I just want to point something out because I'm really tired of this ridiculousness. The people of Elohim are multi-ethnic. They've never been one race. They've never been one skin color. They have always been multi-ethnic, all right? Solomon himself, King David, married Bathsheba, who was a black woman. No getting around that. Solomon had locks, locks, kinky hair. And it says right here in verse 11, And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh from the city of David to the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife will not live in the house of David, king of Israel, for the places where the ark of the Lord have been are holy. His wife was Egyptian, also a black woman. I'm really tired of this, you know, protecting Jewish identity uh, that if you're only of, of, of you know, pale skin, or if you don't, you know, if you don't look like, you know, a certain type that you're not possibly the people. I'm tired of this ridiculousness. I'm tired of it. He ain't coming to save your skin color. Okay. <laughs> you could be Judean by genetics and you could have hate in your heart and you could be violating his law and you can go down to the pit. So let's just put this to bed because I'm tired of it. I don't care what shade of brown you are. If you don't have the spirit of Abba, if you don't have the spirit of love and you have not placed your trust in the high priest, in the finished works of the high priest who goes into the Holy of Holies, right? And makes atonement for your sin as his people, as a whole. If you haven't done that, then your good is gone, okay? So let's stop with this ridiculousness of ethnic purity, if you are not of his spirit, it doesn't matter. Your flesh will not inherit the kingdom. So let's make sure we're of his spirit. Y'all know this is a Bible study slash preach and teach, okay? I give plenty of room for the Holy Spirit to say whatever. Whatever the father wants to say to his children. To get us to get into agreement and stop fighting with one another about stupidity. All right? So let's continue. Right here in verse 12, it says... At the time Solomon offered up burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord that he built, according to the daily duty to offer up the commandment of Moses for Sabbaths, new moons, and three annual festivals. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. I want to stop there, and now I want to point you to Isaiah chapter 66. This is the time when Messiah comes for the second time and he brings the kingdom here on earth the millennial reign so i want to read in the middle of verse 20 and this is what it says says the lord as the sons of israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the lord says i will also take some of them for priests and for levites says the lord this is during the millennial reign i'm going to continue to read so that you'll see the same language for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall reign before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants in your name remain. From one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come and worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look on the corpses of the men who have transgressed me. So the feasts and festivals, they're in the millennial kingdom. The Sabbath even though we will be living in the seventh day, every week we will have a Sabbath. So how are you going to argue that the Sabbath has been done away with? I'm trying to help my brothers and sisters in Messiah wake up to the truth. I know that a lot of us have been brainwashed and a lot of false doctrine, but it's time to wake up. 
There's plenty of scripture that points to the truth of certain things that will return. And we need to open up our hearts and minds to receive the absolute truth of what things will look like in the future. Okay? If it mattered in the old covenant and it mattered when Messiah walked the first time and it matters when he comes back, then it matters right now. You can't see those false bricks, they fall. They fall when you read all of scripture. And that's what I encourage my brothers and sisters in Christ strongly to do. That starting from the back of the book, nobody does that. Nobody reads a book at the end. Nobody does that with any other book. I don't know why we think that that's, you know, a sound way to understand the fullness of scripture. All right, walking into chapter nine. Now we see that Queen of Sheba comes to visit because she hears of this king and of his wisdom and she wants to see for herself because she didn't believe the report. Can I can I just preach for a second? She did not believe the report that came to her regarding the king. So she had to come and see for herself. Let that preach to you by itself. And so she sat, she heard, and she saw that the report is true. Taste and see that the Lord is good and he is true. Okay. And it says that after she witnessed his greatness, it says, then she gave the king 120 talents of gold and a great abundance of spices and stones. This didn't just affect her. This affected other kings, other kingdoms. I want to read in chapter 9, verse 22 through 24. It says, So King Solomon was greater than all the kings of the earth in the wealth and wisdom. All the kings of the earth sought out an audience before Solomon to hear his wisdom that God gave to his mind. Every year, each man brought his own tribute, vessels of silver and gold, garments, myrrh, spices, horses, mules. Do you see this? I'm always going to point you. I'm always going to point you to the future. In the millennial kingdom, year after year, every nation is going to come up at the Feast of Tabernacles. They're going to hear him give the law at Mount Zion. They're going to bring gifts. No one is going to come empty handed before the king. Do y'all know the song Joy to the World is actually a messianic song? I know that the majority of the world sees the song Joy to the World as a Christmas song. It's a messianic song. Okay, if you listen to the lyrics, the lyrics tell of his second coming, not of the first, because the lyrics in the song suggest that this has not happened yet. And so my challenge to you is to look at the lyrics. Look at the lyrics. Joy to the world is actually a declaration of his second coming, not of the first. Okay, but when he came the first time, did not the wise men come and bring gifts no one came empty-handed. You don't come before a king without gifts. You can watch every show about when you come into the king's court. You don't come empty-handed. That is unheard of. So when Messiah comes the second time to establish the kingdom, no one's going to come empty-handed before him. And if you do, it will be considered a great disgrace. It just gives you something to ponder about. It gives you something to study over the weekend as we approach the Holy Shabbat holy sabbath okay that still stands right now anyways so now we see at the end of chapter nine is the death of king solomon so now his son is reigning in the place his son rehoboam and so i want you to see it says your father made our yoke heavy now therefore lighten your father's labor and heavy the yoke that he put on us king solomon did enslave outsiders he instilled slavery King Solomon did break Torah. He broke the law. And so now his son is the king and the people are pleading with him to lighten the burden. Do not be like your father Solomon. Lighten the burden. So elders come and give him the advice to listen to the people. Then Rehoboam goes to the younger generation and they say, don't listen to them. They're lazy. Make the burden heavier. So Rehoboam listens to the younger men who are not wise in years, who don't know how to rule and reign. And he dismisses the elders. And oh my gosh, that is the tragedy of what is happening in this generation. 
Everybody hates authority. Nobody wants to look up to those who have lived before them, who have wisdom of years. Everybody thinks that they're just wise in their own eyes. And that's why we see just chaos everywhere. But anyways, now he says, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will increase it. My father chastened you with whips, but I will chasten you with scorpions. And so this is the start of the breaking of the kingdom of the northern tribes and the southern tribes. And the people cry out. They cry out and they say, what portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. O Israel, each man to your tent. Now look after your own house, O David. They detested Rehoboam. And I'm talking about all of the tribes. They detested him. So now we see that King Rehoboam, right? Solomon's son, he sends out his uh, slave driver and he sends them out to go get the sons of Israel, right? Because they're divided. They're like, this king does not care about us. And so he goes to try to enslave these people and they stone him. They stone his slave driver because they're like, no, we are not. We were brought out of Egypt and we will not be slaves within our own kingdom. All right, so they rebelled against Rehoboam. So now Jeroboam steps back on the scene. And so you're like, where did he come from? Jeroboam was actually under the command of King Solomon. But Jeroboam received a prophecy. And if you want to go back to this prophecy, it's going to be in 1 King chapter 11, verses 26 through 40. He received a prophecy that he would be a king, right? And so at this point, King Solomon is the king. King Solomon gets a whiff of this prophecy. And so King Solomon goes after Jeroboam's life. This kind of reminds me of Saul and David, right? Well, now King Solomon is seeking the life of Jeroboam. So Jeroboam, he fled to Egypt and then he heard that King Solomon died. So he came back to Israel. And at this point in time, he hears the moaning and the groaning of the children of Israel, how they're like, we have no portion in David. You know, he wants to make us slaves and he wants to make it worse. And so at this point, the kingdom is split. Jeroboam is like, all right, that prophecy that was prophesied about me, let's get that thing into action. So the 10 northern tribes go up and the kingdom is split. Now we have Samaria, which is the northern kingdom. And then we have Judah, the southern kingdom, which is predominantly Judah and Benjamin. And then you have the tribe of, of Levites as well. But the 10 northern tribes, it's at this point where it's split. Because they refuse to be slaves again. You should refuse to be a slave to sin. Once you are free, why don't you fight to remain free? That's the message for today. So deep in word family, be free. Be free in Messiah. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. You are free from the bondage of sin that your flesh held you to. It is no longer we who lives, but it's Christ in us. It's Messiah in us. It's Yeshua in us. He comes to take up residence within his true temple. Let him make you over and let go and let God. Don't allow what other people speak about you, hold you down. Believe all of the words that your Lord, that your Messiah has spoken about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have been made for such a time as this to prepare for what is coming. It has been revealed that we are the priesthood. It has been revealed that we are the temple, that house, the spirit of the living God. That means something. That's major. You are so special that he wanted to come and take up residence on the inside of you. He wanted to live inside of you. That's special. Y'all, and please check out the song, Joy to the World. Check it out in the description box below and watch the lyrics. And then tell me that this is not about his second coming. This is during the time of the millennial reign. Please check it out. It will bless you richly. I also have an article in the description box below about some of the difficult truths that we may have to face concerning the millennial Rain. Now, we spoke about this in the book of Ezekiel, but I want to revisit this because we need to prepare ourselves that we don't understand quite everything 
that is coming, but we're doing our best to understand. Let us not fight about those things that we don't quite know yet. But let's encourage each other on the things that are made crystal clear in the scriptures. And what's for certain? Oh, we will be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. We will be celebrating all of the biblical feasts, right? To give honor and glory to the King of glory. All of the nations will know of the works that he has done to bring us to the point where we will be in the millennial reign. And they will know of the work that he will continue to do concerning everything that points to New Jerusalem coming down. Deep Inward family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.